Hello and welcome to BuildBox. In this quick video, we want to show you how to start adding assets into your game. Now, there are several different ways you can go about this, but the easiest way is simply to drag and drop assets from your desktop into the BuildBox interface. Let me show you. Here I've got a new game build, and I haven't added any assets. So I'm going to start by adding a background image. I'll select the image from my desktop, drag it over into BuildBox, and as I do that, you'll notice this drop wheel appears, and I can choose to set this as a character, an object, a background, or an action. This is a background image, so I'll drop it in as a background. And just like that, my background image has been added. I'll go ahead and bring in my next background image, which is some foliage for my scene. I'll drag that over, and again I'll select background, and this image was added successfully but it looks a little bit strange to have these plants just floating in air. So I'll click within this circle and just drag this down to the bottom of the screen because I know that's where the plants are going to be positioned in the game. Finally, I'll add my ground layer background image. So I'll just drag that in again, drop it in as a background, and then move this to the bottom of the screen. And just like that, I've created my game background. Now let's add an obstacle to the game, like a box. So I'll go ahead and grab this box image, and I'll drag this over, and I'm going to set this as an object. So I'll drop it into the object section, and it appears in my scene. Again, I can just click within this frame and drag it to where I want it to appear. Now I want to scale this up a little bit. I can scale this horizontally by clicking this point and dragging. I can scale it vertically. And I can also scale horizontally and vertically simultaneously by clicking and dragging this corner point. If I hold the shift key and click and drag this corner point, I can scale horizontally and vertically while keeping the same proportions. Finally, if I want to rotate this object, I can simply click this round corner point and drag to rotate the object. This gives me full control over the object and allows me to position and resize the object to appear exactly the way that I want it to within my game. Now let's add a character to our game. In this case, I have a character idle animation, which is a PNG sequence. So I'm going to drag all the images in this PNG sequence over on top of the BuildBox interface, and then I'm going to drop that into the character section. When I do that, you'll notice that the character isn't automatically added to the scene. However, on the left-hand side in the assets bar, if I expand this character option, I can see the character we just added here and click and drag them to my scene. And again, I can position and resize my character as desired. Finally, I'll add a power-up to my scene. So I'll bring in the image, and then I'm going to drop this in the action section. Now in this case, you'll notice that the power-up image is much larger than everything else in the scene. And the reason for that is that we provide a lot of high-resolution files with your copy of BuildBox. But because these files are such high resolution, sometimes they might appear a little bit too large for the scene when you drop them in. So it's important to scale everything proportionately to make sure that it fits with the rest of your game. So I'll scale that down and position it to where I'd like it to appear in the scene. And I think that looks a lot better. So just bear in mind that you might have to rescale the images to make sure that everything appears proportional. It's also important to point out that each different type of asset in the game has different settings available. So if I select my character asset, for example, you'll see we have some options to input different animation sequences, we can adjust the sounds for the character, the gameplay effects, as well as the gameplay settings. Now these settings in the options bar are different for a character asset than they would be for an object asset, for example. So if I select my box object, you'll see we have some animation settings we can change, we have some sounds, but the options available here in the options bar are different than the options that were available for the character assets. And the same is true, of course, for power-ups. We have a different set of options available for power-ups. So for example, here we could set what action the power-up enables when the character activates that power-up, and then we have other options for the power-up, like the sound options, the property options, and so on. In our next video, we'll go into further detail on some of the options available for different assets. Thanks for watching.